A few years ago, my home was invaded. We were under attack. Every day was a battle and a war that we were desperately losing. We were on the verge of giving up hope and succumbing to our new overlords forever. And no, I'm not talking about an invasion by people. <laughs> my home was invaded by an army of carpenter ants. It's the only time as a homeowner that I had to fight for my house. Never in my life have I experienced anything like the incredible force of carpenter ants. I won the war, but they ultimately won my respect in the end, and it was obvious to me why ants have been such an influence on fiction. The army of carpenter ants is the subject of my sketchbook today. I'm Michael Laron, and this is the Writer's Journey Podcast, where you get a window into the life of a working science fiction and fantasy author. I'm on a mission to go from nobody to bestseller, and I'm documenting every step of the way. Tune in every week as I share my progress and discover what inspires my books and how I write them. You can find the show notes for today's episode at michaelleron.com slash podcast. This week, I'm reading a page from my writer's sketchbook. Hello and welcome to episode 31, the story of how an army of carpenter ants nearly gave me a mental breakdown. My wife and I bought a house a few years ago and the house sits on a big lot that has lots of trees. A lot of trees. When you're a homeowner, the number of trees on your property directly correlates to the number of problems you'll have with the home. I wish somebody had told me that before I bought the house. For example, we had tree roots break our pipes. We have a family of possums that live in a tree in our backyard. A tree was growing up against our back porch and we cut it down, but it already did tremendous damage because the previous homeowner did nothing about it. Every autumn I have to do a lot of work to rake and mulch leaves in my yard. It usually takes me two weekends to get all the leaves up. The trees shade my property so we don't get much sunlight in our yard, making it hard to grow things. A pine tree in my backyard sheds its needles directly into my gutter. A family of deer lived behind my garage, hidden for days by trees. My backyard has been home to owls, to hawks, to groundhogs using tree stumps to grind their teeth on. So yes, as much as I love trees, as much as they are a gift to society and offer all the scientific and wonderful things that they do, they are nothing but trouble for a homeowner if you have too many of them. Which brings me to my carpenter ant story. The summer started off like any other. Hot, sunny, lawnmowers humming every evening and crickets singing every night. Just another season in our Midwest house, life going on as normal. One day, my wife noticed an ant in the kitchen. She squashed it and didn't think anything of it. Another day, I saw an ant in the bathroom. I crushed it with some tissue and moved on. Another day, we both noticed an ant traveling along a baseboard. I crouched to inspect it and noticed it for the first time, a stocky black ant. Compared to other ants I've seen, this one was built like a boxer. It could beat the crap out of a field ant. Again, we squashed it, talked for a minute about how it might have gotten into the house, and went on with our day. And then, the next morning, ants were everywhere. They were on the walls, on the floor, in every room. They invaded our food. They invaded our daughter's toys and bit her while she played. They attacked me in the shower. My home had been thoroughly besieged. We tried to fight the ants with bug spray and ant traps. We killed maybe a hundred a day, caught hundreds more, but still they kept coming. I patrolled the perimeter of my house, tried to find where they were getting in. There were no holes, no openings, nothing. It only took two days before we were completely defeated. I called a local pest control service. I couldn't have been happier when a black truck rolled into my driveway. A fat guy in a t-shirt and jeans climbed out, smiling and whistling as he strapped on a utility belt. He greeted me jovially, frowning at a trail of ants on my sidewalk. We walked around the house and he inspected the same spots I did. No openings. Hmm, he said, bending over a little too far and revealing more behind than I wanted to see. Then we went into the house and he observed more ants on the wall. Talk about trouble, 
he said. As we moved through the house, he kept whistling, shining a flashlight behind all the furniture into the attic. You've got a serious case of carpenter ants, he said. At that point, I had no idea what carpenter ants were. He then told me that they were a big problem, and if I didn't do something, they'd undermine the structure of my house. I gulped. $200 later, he armed the house with more baits and traps. He told me that if I saw the nest, to call him right away. The traps didn't work. In fact, the ants seemed to multiply. I was desperate. I was willing to do anything to get rid of these damn ants. At this point, they had already bitten my infant daughter multiple times, and we couldn't keep letting this happen. They were getting meaner and bolder, too, openly attacking me when I was writing my novels, climbing over our food as we were eating it, and their bites stung. One day, when my mom was visiting, she picked up a fallen tree branch in my yard and told me she noticed something strange in a dead cherry tree in the back of my property. I inspected it, and sure enough, there was a river of ants flowing in and out of a hole in the tree. I measured the distance between the tree and my house, and it was a good 100 to 150 feet, probably the equivalent of a day's journey for an ant. I called the pest control guy, and he was there the next day. Yep, he said, putting his hands on his hips. I'll be damned. I've never seen anything like this. They're traveling really far. He threw some kind of bomb into the hole in the tree, and the ants spilled out. Hundreds of thousands of them. I had never seen anything like this in my life. Later that night, the grass was covered in dead carpenter ants, and my lawn was filled with birds who were feasting on them. Slowly but surely, the ants disappeared. We still saw them in the house, but in fewer numbers. After a few days, they disappeared completely. We had the tree cut down and taken away. We had won the war. But in the end, the ants won my respect. They were a true force of nature. Hoped you liked that one. Like I said, those ants were inspiring. Since, I've learned to think of my books like carpenter ants. They're journeying out into the world to find readers and bring money. The more books I have, the more people will pay attention. And every day they bring back money to me, the mother colony. I, I, I know it's a little cheesy, but the analogy works in my head. <laughs> anyway, the moral of the story is if you ever see ants in your house, just call somebody. My wife and I still talk to this very day about how quickly they multiplied. I know it sounds like I dramatized it in this podcast, but I'm serious about how quickly they multiplied, and I wasn't exaggerating. And I wasn't kidding about trees either. That cherry tree was the cause of our troubles. So if you own a home, do yourself a favor and inspect your trees. You'll be glad you did. Thanks for joining me this week. If you enjoyed the show, here are a couple ways to help a brother out. If you're listening to this on Anchor, favorite the show. If you're listening to this on a podcast app, do me a favor and write me a review and share it with your friends. You can, of course, visit my website and learn more about my work at michaelleron.com. If you have a question, send me a voice message on Anchor and you just might hear it on the show. Next week, I'll be going behind the scenes of my writing process. Until then, I leave you with a quote. When you have seen one ant, one bird, one tree, you have not seen them all. E.O. Wilson. <laughs>